I have some fantastic news. AMD has new tools for VMware migration from old Intel clusters to new AMD machines. This is the Supermicro 2125HS-TNR. It's a two-socket platform, 1.5 terabytes of memory, which sounds like a lot, but that's actually only 64 gig DIMMs, which are the affordable DIMM. We're getting a nine to one consolidation ratio using this platform, consolidating older Skylake era and older Xeons, like Skylake, Broadwell, even older than Broadwell, onto this platform, thanks to these new AMD tools. Let's, let's get out of here and take a closer look. Ah, that's better. Always wear hearing protection. Uh, don't actually get to run the cameras in like the real data center. That's just the experimental area. But VMware, can't live with it, can't live without it. Am I right or am I right? Ah, you, you know what I'm talking about. No, eight to one, nine to one consolidation ratios. Is that really, really what we're looking at? I mean, we're on the precipice of AMD's next generation CPU being released, Turin, and Intel with their own offerings, which have unprecedented density options. 64 cores, 128 cores, 192 cores. That's unheard of. Is it reasonable to expect that you could do five, six, eight to one consolidations. Well, yeah, if, you're, if your equipment is old enough, sure. But if you're a VMware administrator, uh, things like that make you a little nervous because how do you add another machine to the cluster? If you've got one of the Dell cluster in a box solutions, it's not as easy as enrolling a new machine into the cluster and then just doing a live migration. I mean, that would certainly be the most convenient thing because you could just add a machine and do the migration. But there's a lot of things about that that Broadcom frowns upon or that are outright not supported in the VMware ecosystem. The big one here is cross-architecture. If you're running a VMware cluster, Broadcom really wants you to have all of your hardware to be as homogenous as possible and really only specific conf configurations have actually been validated and supported. And if you start going cowboy and wild west with enterprise gear, mm, that's frowned upon and if it doesn't go exactly according to plan, you're going to get fired which is why I'm happy to say that AMD, for their part, has worked directly with Broadcom to get their blessings on VMware extensions. You can't just go Wild West. Not even Intel or AMD themselves can go Wild West with extensions to VMware. And so you, you have to get Broadcom sign off, you have to do the validation, you have to do all the testing, and that's where all the cost comes in. Well, AMD has done exactly that. They provide migration tools now that as of the first part of 2024, this wasn't on my radar, but I actually got a chance to take these for a spin recently, uh, that ease the migration, give you some tools where you can schedule downtime and migration, but you can also do throttling to configure it. They call it vamped, not to be confused with the old Saturday Night Live clip where I think Mike Myers was verklempt, but V-A-M-T. Now, in addition to giving you fine-grained control over how it does the migration, you can actually throttle the network interface and choose uh, what order things are migrated in, which is not often straightforward in VMware's default interface for dealing with that kind of thing. But it also provides a facility for doing validation that the transfer has completed successfully and will even hold the VM until the guest tools have been fully reinstalled and verified that they're there in the guest operating system before allowing the virtual machine to access the network or to become, you know, online again or uh, you know whatever your particular situation requires, which is kind of huge. And if the unforeseen happens, if something doesn't go right, there's also rollback. So if you've got your old cluster and you've got a new machine with a new architecture in the cluster and you're doing an offline migration of the VM and in the process you boot up the old VM on the new hardware and something doesn't exactly go according to plan, you can roll back. And that's part of the tool. The tool will give you the facility to do that. Getting the software set up is pretty easy. You will have to download uh, the architecture migration tool directly. The migration process uses tags to keep track of the state of the machine as it goes through the migration process. And that is something you can quickly and easily see from VMware vSphere. In case you're wondering, this does work with the distributed resource scheduler. So if that's part of your vCenter setup, that's gonna drop right in with this. You gotta make sure that that's actually running and you, you're using it in your cluster, but 
if you're worried about that, you're, you're probably already there. And there's a full logging facility. So anything that you have that ties in with syslog, so like if you're using Splunk or something like that, this tool will also log all of the steps, uh, every step of the way through the migration process to syslog, and you can use your log analysis tools to keep track of it. If you have a ton of machines to migrate and you'd prefer something that's even more automated, you can give the VAMT tool a CSV, so you can do your machine migrations that way as well. So even if you have hundreds or thousands of machines to migrate and manage, you can use the tool to <laughs> you know, migrate a CSV list of machines, but also verify that they came up correctly before marking them as online again. So that's pretty handy. I was also happy to see that these tools make use of snapshots and the snapshots are something you'll have to worry about in terms of pruning and cleaning up later. There are some facilities in the tool to help you do that, but the fact that it uses snapshots will speed migration and will also help you a ton in case anything goes sideways or anything doesn't go according to plan. Now, it would be amazing if we could do live migrations, but that is not something Broadcom supports or sanctions. So this is an offline migration. But if you're running, let's say, a PostgreSQL database cluster that's, uh, you know, five nodes and you've got the rules set up so that the members of the PostgreSQL cluster are always on different physical hosts in your VMR cluster, those rules will still apply. So when you do a migration and you shut down one of the members of your cluster, there's still enough members there to be a quorum. And then once the migration has completed and the verification step happens and it boots up and the the guest tools are updated for the new platform, et cetera, et cetera, then the machine can be added back to the cluster. Now, there may be wrinkles there because like on, I think Microsoft SQL Server, it doesn't want you to run the cluster on differing architectures, or at least it didn't. I don't know if that's okay in 2024. That's probably something I should ask Glenn Berry. In practice, I've never really run into it uh, as a problem um, with PostgreSQL. That's something I accidentally discovered uh, after an Amazon upgrade, it's like, oh, they've changed the CPU architecture at this price point. And I didn't realize that the automation that would automatically scale up and down the cluster, that's what you get for not using their database service, right? You should be running, you know, one of Amazon's like RDS or something. You shouldn't be trying to roll your own. That's just crazy. That's a conversation for another day. But here, what we have with a beautiful partnership between AMD and VMware, we have some actually useful tools that are useful for migration. So if you're into that, if you're doing your VMware migration, or you're moving from you know, an Intel to an AMD Epic platform, check out the tool. Click the link, read the blog post, see what you think. Let me know what questions you have, or if you wanna see a demo or a walkthrough or something like that. Cause yeah, those, so those, uh, those Skylake Arizeons, they're not getting any younger. It might be a ticking time bomb of uh, threat. I'm just saying. I'm Willis Level 1, I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums.